Well, all the markets are red once again. Yes, that's right, all of the markets are red once again, hence that is why my dollar sign is again red. So now that everything has officially crashed, we're gonna talk about if there's even more downside to come, specifically for the cryptocurrency market against the major indexes and stock market. Also, I'm gonna talk about also I'm gonna talk about what, what some of the specific cryptocurrencies like XRP are doing against Bitcoin right now and some of the altcoins. Because there's some really interesting because there are some really interesting diversions happening right now. And I'm gonna talk about the people that actually called this, being that Bitcoin hit 22,600, actually slightly below that. And that's and that was some people's predictions. And we're gonna talk about the Fed possibly raising rates even higher than the 1% that they had mentioned a week ago. So I'm gonna talk about what that might be. Also in the Ripple versus the SEC case, the judge has just given the SEC permission to keep some things redacted. So I'm gonna tell you what the judge decided in this specific motion. Also some interesting news from Ron Hammond of the Blockchain Association regarding what the government is now talking about with cryptocurrencies. Hey everyone, my name is Randy and welcome back to the Late Night Grind. Right now on this channel, we are of course covering the Ripple versus the SEC case, but I'm also covering cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if any or all these topics interest you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the Late Night Grind community. We are heading towards 100,000 subscribers and I'd really appreciate it if you are along for the ride. Also, if you could do three things, I'd really appreciate it. Smash the thumbs up button, watch this video all the way to the end, and also check out my Patreon, link in the description below. All right, guys, let's jump into it. Okay, first, I actually wanted to talk about what Ron Hammond, who he's actually the director of government relations for the Blockchain Association in Washington, D.C., had to say. Now, specifically concerning the crash that's happening around uh, all around the cryptocurrency world, as well as the major indexes, uh, Ron Hammond basically just said, well, uh, the Congress on crypto is uh, kind of on hold for now because a lot of people want to see what shakes out. Uh, not just for the cryptocurrency world, but for the major indexes. So uh, it looks like we're gonna have to sit tight, but Ron Hammond did say he had a couple of lawmakers specifically ask him questions about this crash. So he said, keep in mind, Washington DC is keeping note of what's going on in the crypto market. First you had Luna, and now there's word that Celsius, which which could be going on a bit of a bank run right now uh, with people requesting withdrawals and Celsius saying, no, we're gonna be pausing withdrawals. Well, guess what? Washington's taking note of that. So, of course, when you have that, with the crash of Bitcoin's price down to 22,000, that's a little bit up from that point right now, there is going to be some major discussions had in Washington in a couple weeks. Ron Hammond is one that you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on. I'll put a link in the description below to his Twitter profile because he tweets, because he puts out some information specifically about some of the questions he's getting from lawmakers in Washington regarding the cryptocurrencies. And right now I'm actually gonna talk about what the judge in the Ripple versus the SEC case uh, just did because I wanna talk about the markets last. And I'm doing that specifically because I think there's something brewing in what could be a perfect storm for Bitcoin. I'm going to explain later on this video. So for now, let's talk about what the judge uh, just did, Judge Nepburn, uh, just sided with the SEC on a motion. Now what transpired was Ripple had sent a motion to the judge, uh, basically asking the SEC to answer questions that they, uh, previously, had, pre that they previously had their fourth set of interrogatories. Uh, basically, they said that the SEC is terrible at answering questions or refused to answer questions, which is right. I covered this in one of my previous videos. And so the SEC came back to the judge and they said, well, hang on, there's some things that we want to redact, specifically regarding some exhibits that we're going to be submitting. We want to, we want those redacted. So the judge for right now has actually granted that to the SEC, so they're going to be able to redact some information uh, from some of the exhibits that they're gonna be submitting to answer Ripple's questions. Now the judge, now in the judge's order, it did say that she could revoke that anytime, but for now, uh, that motion is granted. And there is gonna be some major decisions coming up, I believe in the next week or two regarding this case. So you, so if you're not already subscribed to the Late Night Grind, you wanna follow the Ripple versus the SEC case, well, you're gonna to wanna to do that. All right, guys, let's talk about the markets right now because obviously that's uh, the big news everywhere. Um, Bitcoin basically crashed. The rest of the markets, uh, for example, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, they are down uh, two and a half, three, even 4%. Those are some terrible numbers. Those in and of themselves aren't a crash, but when you stack that on top of multiple red days, uh, the last uh, the last couple of weeks has not been looking good. Okay, so Bitcoin officially crashed down to 22,597, I believe was the low point on one of the exchanges that I was looking at. Uh, XRP actually hit a low of 29, 29 cents and change, uh, it, which is currently at 31 cents right now. It bounced back a little bit. Uh, Ethereum down 15%, Bitcoin down 12% overall. Uh, in fact, even gold is falling. Gold's down two and a half percent and that and that falls into my perfect storm theory they're going to talk about in a little bit 
uh, specifically regarding Bitcoin um, and, and crypto. Now, obviously, all the altcoins, they're bleeding. They were bleeding excessively bad last night into this morning. Um, you were, unless you were heavily shorting it, it was best to stay away from it. And even shorting it, there was over a billion dollars of liquidations in the cryptocurrency world that happened over the past 24 hours. However, there was a very interestingly high number of shorts that were liquidated. And from my training experience, this is probably because the shorts were getting a little too aggressive with the leverages that they were using and trying to time it because there were some times when when the price of Bitcoin and the alts would shoot down and then shoot right back up four five six hundred dollars and then right back down. Well, what that had, well, what that does is it hits all your stop losses. It hits liquidation numbers. And so even if you were shorting it, meaning making money as the price of Bitcoin comes down, you could have still lost a lot of money. So it's interesting how many shorts actually got liquidated as the prices were coming down yesterday. Now, obviously the inflation number, the CPI number played a big part into this. Uh, what the Fed is talking about, raising rates played a little bit into this. But I did wanna talk about a couple of people and I saw two, maybe three people that were actually predicting 21 to $23,000 for Bitcoin. And this was back when Bitcoin was at 40 to $45,000. Very few people were actually calling for it. And when they did, they were basically called crazy. So now that we're actually down there, it hit 22,000. Is this the bottom? Is there more to fall? Well, if you're a fan of the cryptocurrency world, you should really hope not. This should be that level of support that a lot of the technicals, uh, according to some of these guys, a lot of the technicals were pointing to as quote unquote, the local bottom. Many, in fact, many people are calling now to go long. If you were buying cryptocurrencies, now would be the time to assume that the price is going up. But of course, this is not financial advice. Make sure you do your own due diligence because as of yesterday, everybody that, that, everybody that bet it was going up or down got hosed either way. Let's talk about what could be a perfect storm for Bitcoin. And what do I mean by that? Well, right now, if you look, all the markets are down. All of the markets, all the investment markets, including gold are down. The only thing, in fact, in fact, one of the only thing that's up right now is the dollar. So uh, investors, institutions, even retail traders are basically exiting their positions, exiting their investments in favor of the dollar. Yes, the dollar that they're losing 8% per year on to inflation. Uh, but it's better than losing 10, 15% in a matter of weeks in your investments. So therefore, many investors feel that the dollar is safer, at least temporarily. So what is that going to do? And why is this a perfect storm for Bitcoin? Well, as some analysts are saying, this is probably, and I say probably with a grain of salt, the local bottom, meaning it, it probably won't fall any further, or if it does, it might not go past, it probably won't go past, say, 20,000. But when we're looking at the NASDAQ, we're looking at the Dow, we're looking at the Dow Jones, and even some of the uh, global indexes, some people are assuming that there is a lot farther to fall, specifically in indexes like the S&P and the NASDAQ. So if they continue to fall, but Bitcoin has essentially seen its bottom, and there is an overwhelming number of investors and people taking extreme amounts of value out of their investments and putting it into the dollar. That creates essentially a powder keg of liquidity that could be coming into something like Bitcoin as soon as there is a slight uptick, a pump, where other investors feel that, you know what? This is it for Bitcoin. This is the bottom. It's going to go up from here. Now, obviously, there's going to be a certain amount of people that are going to keep their investments in cash, uh, in dollars, uh, possibly putting it into other things. But right now, when you see all the investment markets, including gold, losing major percentages, if you see the Bitcoin market start to turn around and for the next couple of weeks, even, mo even a month or two, you see the rest of the indexes continuing to fall. Well, that could be the perfect storm for Bitcoin that I was talking about. All the exits of capital into highly liquid US dollars, could then very easily flow into the cryptocurrency world, specifically with Bitcoin. So this is something that I'm gonna be keeping an eye on because I didn't really see it until I was looking at these markets and putting two and two together. Now, what's one thing that could hurt that or speed up that process even more? Well, the United States Fed is now talking about raising interest rates again. In my last video, I mentioned they, they mentioned 1%. However, I just read earlier today that they are now discussing 2%. Because the inflation numbers were so ridiculous, they feel like they're pigeonholed and this is the only thing they can do to curb inflation or at least do it temporarily. They'll probably bill it as something that is a permanent, uh, a permanent fix, but some of the analysts say, no, that's just temporary. But nonetheless, if that happens, you're gonna start to see an exit from uh, investments such as real estate and commodities into the dollar, into that highly liquid currency, the US dollar, which is why it is rising as well up above 105 right now and continuing to climb. So let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or if you think I'm completely off my rocker. Nonetheless, I would love your feedback so you can also so you can comment down below. Also, also I will put a link to my Twitter profile. You can follow me on Twitter there, have a discussion with me there as well. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching this video all the way to the end. For smashing that thumbs up button, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.